Morning. Let me know if you recognize this song. Say hi to Harold. All right, so <laughs> happy Tuesday, everybody. Everybody. Hope you are doing well. Hi, Tristan. By the way, Tristan, before you ask, I did get sort of a haircut. And I know you would. I know you would have noticed. Um, for once, Mr. Suriati, I'm right. You nailed it. Pirates of the Caribbean. Didn't spell it right, but Car Caribbean. Caribbean. By the way, there is something called a um, Carib bean. Look it up. Look it up. All right, so let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. Now, um, that was really good, Tristan. That's awesome. You're paying attention. I today we're we're looking at um, materials lists and uh, writing procedures, and so we're going to start off talking about materials lists. First of all, Tristan, I know what you plan have have decided to do, plan on doing whatever for your experiment. You may have already started it. I don't know. Maybe you're still in the planning stage. Either way, even if you've already have started it, you need to go and backfill and go in and do those steps. Now, I posted a couple things on Google Classroom. Um, I have some stuff. Uh, that I'm pretty much ready to post. Um, there are examples of materials list. You have started. Okay, good. Um, that's fine if you have, but you're going to have to kind of take a couple steps back and do the work. Now in class, if we, if we were there at class, we would be like, no, you're not going to start until you got this done and this done and this done. Um, but uh, I'm happy that you got started. That's really cool. And so, uh, by the way, if you've joined us and you're able to say hi, say hello. Um, so materials list is pretty important. So Tristan, I'm going to use you for an example. Um, you are t you, um, I know what yours, yours has to do with a plant. So you have so your materials list is it, it quantity is important too. Um, there, somebody was doing an experiment. I have this one that I'm going to post. Um, they're doing an, an experiment with um, sunscreens, different sunscreens, and so <clears throat> their materials list. Check doc. Okay, so that you sent something to me. Then good. I'll have to check it. Um, materials list um, for example uh, an experiment with sunscreen uh, and the effect and effectiveness of sunscreen uh, here listen to this material list 16 sheets of glass so 16 pieces of glass that are you know yay big right um, and th common thickness they all got to be the same uh, five different brands of sunscreen that are SPF 15, five different brands of sunscreen that are SPF 30, 
five different brands of sunscreen that are SPF 50. Um, a UV meter to measure the UV index readings. Uh, a bottle of glass cleaner. Why well, you got to clean up? A box of disposable gloves. Uh, a piece of cloth. Uh, safety goggles. Hmm. Um, a wooden box. So there. This is an experiment where they're measuring the effectiveness of. I don't even have a, a, a title or a list of what this experiment is, but I can tell you right now, they are um, looking at five different brands of different SPFs. And what they're trying to do is determine the quality of the brands. Are they accurate? Are, and so they have a UV meter that measures the amount of ultraviolet light that's coming through. So let's say they did it on a sun, sunny day and they have a box with a piece of glass and a clear piece of, a piece of glass and a UV meter and they, they read it and it says, um, let's say it says 100. And so then they put some sunscreen, five, you know, five different brands, right? If you notice, there's five brands of 15, five brands of 30, five brands of 50, 16 sheets of glass. Well, five, five, and five is 15. Why 16? That one is going to be their um, control. Um, that's just the plain piece of glass and how much UV light they actually have with nothing protecting it. And so this is a pretty cool experiment where they're, they're – verifying that an SPF 50 is actually an SPF 50. Hey, what's going on? Glad, glad you can join us. And so it's very specific about what is in that materials list. I've got some uh, ducks wandering around outside my window and I've got a mom sitting on her uh, eggs up here. Uh, I got Harold up there. <laughs> So uh, I'm just in, enjoying myself while I'm talking to you guys. But, um, and so one of the things that you're going to find, and you might find this, Trist, Tristan, if you've already sent one to me, and um, I know um, Mr. Roblox, you, uh, you sent me an idea too. And I think I sent something back to you saying, I like your idea, but I, I was th I'm thinking maybe yours needs to be, honed in, I mean, meaning a little bit more uh, specific, even though I like your idea. Uh, and and I'll, I'll uh, send you a message on what I, what I mean and give you a couple options. Uh, but the ideas that I've gotten from people so far are pretty cool. And something's vibrating over here. All right, so, uh, but what you'll find is if you've made your materials list and you've, and you uh, think you've got a pretty good materials list. Once you start going, what well, morning? Once you start going, one of the things that happens, and you'll is, is you start the experiment, and you go, "Oh, I forgot something that I need." And you're like, "Oh crap!" So here's what I remember. Here's what I want you to do. And I said this the other day too. If your materials list, <coughs> there's a reason why these Google Docs work so well. If your materials list needs to be adjusted, that's perfectly fine. That means you've learned something from your experience, right? I've learned that, oh, I forgot. And you might forget five things. You might forget one. You might not forget any. You might forget two. Whatever it is, you go back into that Google Doc and change that so – if you forgot that you needed um, a garbage bag, go in there, type in garbage bag, make sure it's a different color than what you started off with. And um, that will help you. Uh, that will help me know that, okay, here they made the materials list. Here's this person made the materials list, and they realized that they um, – forgot something and so they added it in 
that means you i know that you've learned something you've corrected a mistake and that's fine because when you're doing experiments you're bound to make some mistakes so i expect to see that where um your materials list is sent to me and then you have to go back and amend it because you realize yeah i forgot something maybe it has something to do with cleaning up it has something to do with cleaning up after uh after yourself and you never thought about that maybe it has something to do with protection uh maybe it has something to do with um uh something that's that you just totally didn't think about that's fine add it in and it's not a problem whatsoever all right now that's a materials list does anybody have any questions so far about running a materials list? it's literally literally a list again for those of you that just joined me i have an example on my other computer i don't even know what the experiment was because it was just a materials list 16 sheets of glass five brands of spf 15 sunscreen five brands of spf 30 sunscreen five brands of spf 50 sunscreen one UV meter, one bottle of glass cleaner, a box of disposable gloves, a piece of cloth, a pair of thick safety goggles, a wooden box with no covering on the top. Ooh, that's where the glass goes. All right, so this person's really kind of thought this out and they've got a pretty good uh, materials list and they have presented that. That's one of the steps of doing that experiment, okay? So make sure that that's done. That's a step that has to be done. That is part, part of your grade. Um, what I'm doing is I'm making this, uh, this whole experiment process uh, worth 100, I think it's worth 100 points. And so each step is worth points. And so if I think, and the other part of that is if I look at it and I say, hey, you missed a couple things that I can think of. What about this? I'm going to type it back. I'm going to type you a message and say, I'm not going to type it in there for you on your doc. I'm going to say, don't you need uh, this, this, and this? Don't you need these other three items with a question mark? Okay. If you can somehow justify not needing them, fine. If you realize you need them, you add them in. You do them in a different color because that wasn't part of your original materials list. And that's fine. That means you're learning something. All that is showing to me is you're, you're showing progress. You're showing growth. You're showing that, okay, I, this is what I needed. Now I realize that I need this, this, and this. That's awesome for me to see that you guys come to a realization that, all right, I'm really putting some effort and thought into this, and I realize that I need to do something different. I need to add something. That's great. All right. So let's talk about conducting the experiment yeah mr Foss and i just posted we the way we did it was 15 points for every step but the experiment itself that's worth 25. Um, remember i would love to have um, uh, pictures of your experiment that you that you email to me and you can email me off of a phone Every, every, everybody's cell phone has like a Gmail address to it where you can um, just send me a, a picture of your experiment, uh, possibly maybe even a short video, I don't know. But um, I, if you can post it some other way, if you can post it, uh, Google Classroom, fine. I don't care how you get it to me. Uh, uh, Put it on YouTube and, and give and you can put it on your own YouTube channel and give me a, a, a reference, hey Nick. And um, that's fine. So getting back to where we were, we talked about a materials list and the, the importance of each step. I'm going to have two examples of materials list that I'm, um, I'm going to post as soon as we get off of here. And an example, probably two examples of uh, procedures and some common mistakes that can be made. Um, 
my phone's going crazy buzzing like crazy so let's talk about a couple things um that uh that you need to rem remember when you're actually doing steps of, of an experiment and i've talked about this a lot are you adequately recording your observations and for example if we're doing something with um with plants um and we're we're growing plants are we growing them from seeds um are do we have a little seedling that we're starting with and so depending on that we could say okay i planted them on may 1st okay and so is it inside is it outside is it something you have outside or something you have inside if it's inside where do you have it sitting? Do you have it sitting in sunlight? Okay. If you have it sitting in sunlight, what was the weather like that day? What is the room temperature or ambient temperature in your house? Do you have a way to check that? Do you have some sort of a thermometer? Can you look at, you know, I've got thermometers if you're using liquids. Um, many of us have cooking thermometers at home that we can use, that sort of stuff. Are you getting all the data that you can? Was it a sunny day? Was it a cloudy day? Things to think about. Is that gonna affect um, the photosynthesis pro process? Does, does the amount of temperature, how much water are you using? Um, if you're cooking something, how long are you cooking it for? What temperature are you cooking it at? Um, these are the things that are really important, and sometimes you don't think about them, um, but accurately recording those observations. Remember, observations, uh, what we see, what we smell, possibly what we taste, depending on what it is, what we hear, what we can feel, um, what we can measure, and we can measure things a lot of ways. We can, we can measure growth, you know, in, in inches, we can measure temperature, we can measure time. There's a lot of different ways that we can <coughs> measure things. And um, wind, weather, rain, uh, severe weather. Uh, if you're doing something that has to do with something outside, fine. Um, the other thing is, am I really, really getting a precise measurement? When I'm measuring something as being a half, an inch, is it actually an inch? Remember with these rulers, zero starts there. So if I measure from the edge to here, I'm measuring, I'm actually measuring more than an inch. Um, are you looking at your ruler properly? Uh, how do you, how do you know whether a thermometer is actually calibrated properly if it's in a glass of ice it probably should read about 32 degrees okay um that's one of the ways we used to calibrate ours if it's in fahrenheit um, if it's in celsius it should read zero all right so please be thinking of any questions that you have um so make sure that you're doing accurate measurements uh, inaccurate measurements are going to throw off an experiment and you can measure even liquids. You know, I have a beaker here, but if you're just using a, a measuring cup, that's, that's fine. Uh, you know, you can use a measuring cup out of your kitchen. It could be, um, for liquids, it could be, you know, measuring cup for, for powders. Um, uh, you have to have a good chart to, to record data. There's, there is a reason why I didn't give you guys a chart because everyone's experiment is going to be unique to what you're doing, okay? You might be checking three different things. Um, you might have 10 different data points that you're going to collect. So it really depends on what your experiment is. If you're, if you're, doing, if you're doing something with growth of a plant, right? Um, when did you plant it? How many days are you out? What is the temperature? How much sunlight? 
how much growth, how much water did I use? Uh, that's six data points right there that I thought about without even talking. Okay, color. Um, is the plant a healthy green, nice dark green? Is it a light green? Is it getting sick? That's another data point. Um, uh, are the leaves happy? Are they droopy? Another data point, seven, eight, or seven or eight there. Um, what what other things can you think of if it's if it has to do with <clears throat> um, cooking something? Um, how much water did you use? Did you have to use an egg? Um, how much liquid did you use? What was the temperature of the water that you used? How what temperature did you bake it at? How long did you bake it for? That's four data points, right? Um, how did it come out? Was it burnt? Well, if it was my wife cookies, it was burnt, but um, was it burnt? Uh, was it undercooked? Was it just right? Uh, what was its color? What was its smell? Ultimately, if it's food and it's edible, what was its taste? You're looking at nine or 10 different data points that you're collecting. Every, so every experiment that you do is going to be completely different. That's all right, Madison. So every every experiment you do is going to be um, completely different. Um, another and and so let's look at uh, let's look at a couple important things um, that you need to make sure you don't do. Um, make sure you don't ignore information or data that is actually really important. Okay. Uh, for example, <clears throat> let's go back to um, those plants. If we got three different plants, okay, uh, how much does the amount of sunlight play a role in, how much does the amount of sunlight play a role in how much growth you have? Do you have all three plants in the same amount of light? Will the amount of light affect how quickly or how healthy a plant grows? Um, make sure you're not ruling out or ignoring important data that might change the results from one to the other. Um, it's typical to, for us to do an experiment to have uh, three or four uh, things to look at. Okay, we might want to try something and we're, we're, we have a variable that we're doing three different ways. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, sometimes four. Um, peace. Uh, so it really depends on how much data you want to collect. And so make sure that your, your materials list doesn't miss anything. Even if it's even if you need a tongue depressor for something, if you have to label something, you need a marker. That's on your materials list. Uh, a, a notebook pad to record your data. A pen. Yeah, that's really on your materials list. Um, and make sure that you're not um, that you're doing the experiment completely. Um, do are we skipping a step? Yeah, I know you guys are at home, and I'm not. You know that I'm not there to observe you, which is one of the reasons why I want you to take pictures of your experiment. Um, I want you because I want you to be intellectually honest about things. Um, be intellectually honest with yourself. Um, you you can choose to cheat and probably get away with it, and you know what? If you do, you do. I do expect to have a picture of the final result of your experiment um, or multiple pictures. And on top of that, it's, it's your choice whether you want to learn something or not. Um, and I hope you have the attitude that you want to want to learn. I'm not there to watch over you. Hopefully you have family members that can help you, <coughs> excuse me, that can videotape or take pictures for you as you're doing the experiment. And again, pick something that you're, you're really interested in and you're gonna have fun with. Um, 
I posted a, a, about a 10 minute video of my wife and I in our greenhouse, um, just kind of as an example, because we're, we've been trying different things in the greenhouse this year. And uh, they're really all little mini experiments. And so we, we've changed variables as far as how we're starting seeds, when we started them, how much water we're using, uh, what we're actually growing them in. Um, and so all, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on when, when we're, we're doing those experiments. And the, the purpose of it was to show you guys how we're growing the same thing in different settings and, and seeing what works best. And, you know, we, st we steal ideas from other people um, that we know or that we've learned about. And so it's okay to uh, borrow somebody's idea and, and change it a little bit and make it your own with these experiments. And lastly, um, just like I said, don't do your hypothesis ahead of time. Don't wait till your experiment's over to write your hypothesis. You don't, you're high, and, and that's one of the things that I see, and Mr. Voss Knight and I laugh about it, really, that everybody's hypothesis is right. In the real world, everybody's hypothesis is wrong probably 90 plus percent of the time. It's okay to be wrong. That's where the learning comes in. This is what I thought was gonna happen, and this is what actually happened. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about analyzing your your data and and writing writing your your report um, over the next few sessions. It is eleven thirty, um, and I uh, we need to get out. And Mr. Fosnight told me that um, after listening, he's doing an experiment that the eighth graders are doing. And after talking, after me talking about some ideas, it made him change his, his question. So for him to change his question means that he needs to change his hypothesis too. You guys, I miss you. Hope you're doing well. A little bumper music to get us out. And we'll see you on Thursday. The word for the day is haircut. Take care, guys.